In today's Scratch project, we're going to make a virtual pet game. This is a pretty simple game to make, but has lots of little parts to it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a blank Scratch project by clicking on the Create button. And once I have my new project, I'm going to come up where it says Untitled, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Pet, since this is going to be my virtual pet. The next step is to decide what pet I'm going to use. If you want to keep the cat Sprite, you can, or you can go choose a different one. I'm going to delete the cat and come down to my little cat Sprite button right down here. When I click on this, it brings me to my list and I'm going to click animals at the top. In here, I have a ton of different animals to choose from, and you may choose any one you want. When you hover your mouse over it, you'll notice that some of them move and some of them don't move. For example, if I come down here to the reindeer, he doesn't move. If they don't move, it means they don't have any costumes. And we do want a sprite with a costume for this project. So make sure whatever one you pick, it does have movement. I'm going to go with dot the space dog. Once I'm in, I want to make sure I'm happy with the size of my pet. Dot's actually a pretty good size, so I don't need to adjust it. But if your sprite is too big or too small and it doesn't leave enough room on your stage, don't forget you can change their size with the size button here and make them bigger or smaller. My next step is to give my little dog a background. So I'm gonna come down to my backdrop button. And since this is a space dog, I think I'm gonna go with the space city. So here's Dot at my space city. And I'm gonna put Dot where I want their starting position to be. We're gonna have Dot do a couple of different things. We're gonna have it start by introducing itself. So I'm going to go to my yellow events dot and I'm going to get my green flag code. When I click the green flag, I want dot to introduce herself. So to do that, I'm going to go to my purple looks button and I'm going to get say hello for two seconds. I'm going to erase hello and I'm going to write my introduction. You can name your character anything you want. I'm just sticking with Dot because that's what my little character is called here. But if you want to change their name, that's also okay. So now when I click my green flag, Dot should say, hi, my name is Dot. Woof. Now that went by a little quickly and that might be hard for people to read. So if I have a longer introduction, I can change how long it stays up there by changing the number of seconds. So maybe I'll have Dot say hello for four seconds. That's a little better and that should give people plenty of time to read it. So the next thing I want is something to happen when I pet my pet. So when I pet Dot, I want Dot to switch costumes and make a sound. And by petting, I'm going to click on dot. To do that, I'm going to go back to my yellow events menu and I'm going to get when this sprite clicked. We use this when we did our clicker game, so this should be a familiar tool. I also want dot to play a sound. So I'm going to go look at my sounds tab up here and dot comes with a bark sound, which is fine. I'll keep the bark, but if you want a different sound, you can go to your sound menu here and choose a different sound for your pet to make. Since I'm happy with bark, I'm just gonna go back to code and I'm gonna go to my hot pink sound menu and get start sound bark. So when I click on dot now, she should bark. Now I also want her to switch her costume. If I click on the costumes tab, I see dot has several different costumes and each one is a little different. 
I don't really need the one with dot facing backwards. So just to make sure I don't accidentally use it, I'm going to click the trash can button to get rid of it and stick with these three costumes. I don't have to use all of them, but I can if I want. So now I want Dot to change her costume a couple of times. To do that, I'm going to have it repeat. I don't want it to keep going forever, but I do want it to repeat several times. So I'm going to go to my orange control dot and I'm going to find a box that says repeat 10. And I'm going to put that underneath bark. Now I don't want dot to change her costume 10 times. I want it to happen two times. So now I'm going to go up to my purple looks menu and I'm going to get switch costume to dot C. And then if we remember from our earlier projects, we want to make sure that we have another one of these and I'm going to make it dot B. So I've dot C and dot B as my two movements. If I do that and I click on her, it doesn't really move a lot. And that's because we need to put our weight codes in. So I'm going to go to my orange control menu and I'm going to get two wait one seconds. One of them is going to be in between the two costumes. The second one goes underneath. So now it works, but that's a long time. So we want to make this a little shorter. Instead of one second, I'm going to make it 0.2 for both of these. So now when I click on that, she does her little dance and it's much faster. So that's our first step for this project. Now, Dot will introduce herself when we click the green flag and she's going to move when we pet her. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some food so that we can feed Dot. To do this, I'm going to need to grab a new Sprite. So I'm going to come down to my Sprite button and I'm going to go up here where it says food and I'm going to decide what I want to give Dot to eat. You can choose whatever you want. I like tacos, so I'm going to give Dot a taco. Now my taco is really huge, so I'm going to come down here where it says 100 and let's try size 50. That's a little bit better. And I'm going to put the taco maybe down here. You can put it, your food wherever you want it on your screen. But you do want to make sure it's a little bit away from your pet so that your pet will have to walk to that food to eat it. So what we want to happen is when we click on the food, we want Dot to come over and eat the food and then go back to her starting position. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, there's a special piece of code we're going to need. We're going to start by going to our yellow events dot and getting when this sprite clicked. We want to make sure that we are on the taco or whatever food you chose when we do this code, not the dog. So when I click on the taco, I want it to let Dot know it's time to come over and eat. There is a special piece of code called broadcast and broadcast sends an invisible message to your program. So I'm going to get this piece of code here. I'm still on the yellow events dot and I come down and I want broadcast message one. So when I click on this sprite, it's going to broadcast whatever my message is. I'm going to click on this triangle and I'm going to click new message and I'm going to call it food. And click OK. So when I click on the taco, it's going to broadcast this secret message called food. 
nothing is going to happen on your program yet because we haven't told Dot what to do if she gets that message. So now we need to go back to Dot and tell Dot what to do when she gets that secret message. So I'm going to click on Dot and come back to her code. And now, still on my yellow events menu, I'm going to get this piece of code that says, when I receive food. This says, when I get that super secret message called food, I'm going to do something. And I want Dot to do a couple of different things. I want Dot to come over to her food. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move Dot over here to where the food is. I'm gonna put her kind of right in front of it. That's where I want her to go when she gets that message. And that will give me the X and Y coordinates of her location on the stage. So now I'm gonna to go to my blue motion menu and I want to look for glide one second to random position. I'm gonna stick that here. I can use this one, or if I wanna use these coordinates, I can use glide one second to X and Y. Either one of these will work. But for this first one, I'm gonna use glide one second to, and I'm gonna pull this down and choose taco. So when I put her back up here, when I click on the taco, it's gonna send that secret message. Dot's gonna get the message and she should glide down here to the taco. There we go, she glided right to the taco. Now you'll notice she went right on top of the taco. If I don't want her right on top of it, that's where I could use the glide to coordinates. That will send her to the coordinates instead of right on top of the taco. So I'm gonna click on the taco and she should glide right there. You can use either one of these, they both work. So now when she gets here, I want her to eat the taco. And I'm gonna add a sound effect. So I'm gonna go to my sounds tab. I have my bark, which I want to keep, but I want to add a new sound by clicking my little speaker button down here. And I'm going to look for the sound called chomp. And I can just type that in up here and click on chomp. I'm gonna go back to my code and now I'm gonna to go to my hot pink sound button and I'm going to get start sound chomp. So I'm gonna put her back here. I'm gonna click the taco and she should chomp on it. Now, the next thing we want her to do is to go back to her starting position. So I'm gonna move her back to where I want her to start. And I'm gonna go back to my blue motion menu. And I'm gonna get another glide one second to X and Y. So these are her new coordinates. So now when I click the taco, she should come over, jump on it, and then go back. That happened a little quickly, so let's slow it down by going to our orange control menu, getting a wait one second and putting it right after the sound chomp. And I'm gonna make this 0.5 seconds. Let's see how that goes. That's a little bit better. So now our pet will go to the food, eat it, and go back in a reasonable amount of time. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a variable called hunger that lets us know how hungry Dot is. Just like with our other games that we've done, we need to make a variable. And to do that, 
I'm going to come over here and go to my dark orange variables menu. I'm going to click make a variable and I'm going to call it hunger. So this will tell us how hungry dot is. So now I have a hunger bar up here at the top. This is very similar to our score button. So what we want to happen is as time goes by, Dot's going to get more and more hungry. And when she eats the food, we want her hunger to go down. So I'm going to start with a yellow events dot and I'm going to get another green flag. Now, when we start the game, I want her hunger to start at zero so that she doesn't start with a whole bunch of hunger. I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to get set hunger to zero and put that underneath. So when I start the game, her hunger is set to zero. Then every five seconds, I want her hunger to go up by one. So I'm gonna go to my orange control menu and I'm gonna get a forever box because I want this to keep happening. I'm going to have it wait five seconds. So I'm going to go get my wait one second code, put it inside the forever box and make it five seconds. Now I'm going to go back to my orange variables and I'm going to get change hunger by one. You want to make sure you get the one that says change. Otherwise it's not going to work correctly. So now when I click my green flag and we wait a couple of seconds, every five seconds, Dot's hunger is going to go up by one. Now we have to make it so that when Dot eats the taco, her hunger level goes down. So we're gonna come back to this little chunk of code where she receives the food and this is really, really simple. All I need to do is get another change hunger by one. And I'm going to put that right underneath the wait code. So now when she eats that taco, when, she, when we click on the taco and she gets that secret message, she's gonna glide to the taco, play the sound, wait 0.5 seconds, but instead of changing it by one, because we want her hunger to go down, we want this to be a negative one. And then she should go back to her starting position. So I'm gonna click my green flag in a moment and it should set the hunger back to zero and we'll test out our game. So she introduces herself and her hunger is gonna start going up. If I click on her, she'll do a little dance and bark. And then to feed her, I'm gonna click on the taco and we should see this number go down. See, her hunger went down and I have to keep feeding her to get that hunger down. All right, and you can adjust that code and change your timing to make it any way you want. So now we know how to use this super secret message to get our sprites to do different things. We can add other things. We could have her do something if we get a brush and brush her. We could give her water. We could give her a toy. We could do all sorts of cool things. The most important thing you need to do now, though, is make sure that you've named your program and that you click that orange share button. Once we've shared it, then you're going to copy the link, click copy link again, and turn it in in Google Classroom.